Алмата. Здравствуйте, мировой Кли. Здравствуйте, Рав. Hello, Ward Кли. Hello, Rav. Во время урока, в частности, сейчас, throughout the lesson, especially now, We hear many old definitions or new definitions of uh, uh, terms in Hebrew, like Tushia, Omer, etc. And there are other words in Hebrew that uh, we hear. And there's a feeling that it's very important to understand these words in Hebrew. As of right now, there is a course for the study of Hebrew and our teacher and the whole uh, crew are doing great work. And now, in the second course, we're studying the texts of Zohar and of Tess, and we started to discover very deeply the depths of the language out of the study of the Hebrew, what we heard before in Russian. It's like becoming revealed in a completely new way. All kinds of very deep concepts in their original language. And from here comes the question, Also, during the lesson, we listen, uh, you know, in Hebrew, in, the, in our earphones, and of course, it's felt in a completely different way. So, from here, we have a question that comes up. How important is it to study the sources in their original language in Hebrew? And what kind of uh, acceleration comes to a person in his spiritual development if he studies the wisdom of Kabbalah in Hebrew? Who are these? Dvora? Tsipora, yes. Look. To me, it seems to be important. I myself also, first of all, I'm completely unable to learn languages. I'm dyslectic that way. I can't remember words. I forget words. I don't have any connection with these words. I don't feel any connection with words. But as we just learned uh, in that second uh, item regarding the counting of the Omer, so he says Omer is from Ilem or Mute and all sorts of these things, uh, meaning Torah, Tushia. The language is very important here. It's not that you can learn you can learn physics in whatever language in all of the sciences of this world but the the Hebrew language and the Kabbalah the spiritual vessels lights actions it, it's the same thing meaning they're the same thing when you read a word you're not reading a word you're moving from kli to kli to kli because the letters are replaced uh, you move from letter to letter and that way you discover the creator and every letter is a sign an indication and every word is sort of a pattern It's like a code. You have these secret codes, right? Or uh, all these, how do you call them? Hackers? Not hackers. No, I mean... Uh, people who... Programmers. Okay, no, I meant... Codes. <laughs> to summarize codes as some encryption but here there's special codes because every word every pattern every the order of the words every root of a word in Hebrew it all stems from the relation between lights and vessels that's where the language comes from it doesn't come from earthly kind of agreement and usage no it came you could say it came straight down from the heavens because of the relations of the lights and the vessels and the more we know it the more we can penetrate 
deeper into the, the connection between light and kli, to feel the, the flavor, of, to feel why, why it is so. I guess from above it's planned that I'll personally lack it, but I feel a great harmony in it and an inner kind of connection between the forces of nature which is performed by the presentation of the letters. And so I'm not talking about uh, such lofty things, and I'm not talking about the language itself, or, which we learn in school, for example. I remember hearing once an explanation from her that she teaches something close to the source text, and I think that it's worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile. The main thing is that it helps you understand the interpretation of the words, because sometimes we say a few words, and if you translate them to English, for example, or any other language, for that matter, you lose, you lose the essence of the explanation of the word itself, what it actually means. And translated, it may you'll see in a very exterior aspect of it, perhaps of the the action which it describes. But in Hebrew, if we know the the word, that word provides you with the content of the kli, how it's interconnected with other uh, vessels, with the light, the type of feeling, nekudot and so on. We know it from the tanta, where all these things come from, how these discernments begin to be discovered. And so, again, because we have 22 letters and uh, 9, 9 and 4, 9, uh, 9 is Bina, 9 the Ampin and 4 Malchut and the Manzapach letters, the 5 which, uh, the 5 letters which stand at the Palsa and the Nekudot. We learned a bit about the Nekudot right now, which are the departure of the lights which create the Nekudot. The Nekudot are the Kelim, and they are they disappear. We don't use them so much. We only intend for them. We don't learn of these signs which these marks, which... It's very important, though. Language... It, it can open the wisdom up for you completely. If we knew the inner meaning of the word and the order of the words and letters, that's everything. In a nutshell, you don't have anything else. It's the revelation of the Creator to the created being. That's how it comes, how it comes about. Well, uh, let's continue, okay? What is it, Niv? Uh, 